Hello, my name is Travis Bayless. Today I'm going to discuss about what it's like to live with bipolar disorder for 10 years. I was initially diagnosed with bipolar 2 or bipolar type 2 in 2008 and then from 2014 and onward I was diagnosed with bipolar 1. The difference between both of these disorders is that uh, with bipolar 2 there's hypomania which means you get elevated mania but it's not all the way up on a grand scale hill. Meanwhile with bipolar 1 you have full blown mania and depression. So the likelihood of living with bipolar disorder or any mental illness is 1 out of 5 people. Uh, I, I'm not sure on the exact statistics when it comes to living with bipolar disorder, but one out of five people have mental illnesses. That includes people like me, normal people, disabled people, professionals, etc. It is also year 2018 and it's been hectic. Although I haven't had one hospitalization, I've had eight in total. Uh, one in 2009, two in 2010, three in 2000, or two in 2014, one in 2015, uh, one in 2017, and I'm missing one, but there's some in there. Just be wary that. I'm forgetful at times and I don't always remember the exact dates when I had them. Uh, in addition to, if you are new here, what is bipolar disorder? Bipolar disorder is experiencing mania and depression. Mania is like heavy spending, egotism, egotism or uh, narcissism. Uh, another thing it could be is very sexualized, highly sexual. Another one could be uh, just a lot of energy. Well, with depression, it's pretty easy. You don't want to get up. You don't want to do anything. You might have suicidal ideations where you have thoughts of wanting to harm yourself or kill yourself and things like that. Anyways, let's just get to the story of 2018. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I went to Korea, and it's the first time I went there. It was a really great trip. I did experience some jet lag with going there, but it was worse coming home, and I ended up oversleeping. Uh, I had to end up taking medications with jet lag. How did that work? Basically, I took my medications at the time of my arrival to Korea so that meant I took them like 12 hours earlier than usual and then I stuck with the the and then I stuck with the the dosage from morning and night there versus the time zone here so they were maybe 12 hours ahead so that's when I took my medication 12 hours earlier now when I came back home I also took it 12 hours earlier in Korea but I was really 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 tired and I do not recommend anyone if you can withhold taking your medications I recommend that you do not take your medications when you're on flight it just makes things really tired you might be really tired and exhausted from your medications that you're taking so I'd wait till you get home uh, it's alright to take them early on there because I didn't have any issues uh, it also depends on the type of medication if it sedates you well you're going to really deal with the sedation while you're still on the trip and it can be really difficult to stay awake so as we cycle through that I ended up working for my first time in my life 47 hours in a week once a 12 hour day and 
consistently five days a week. So it's possible if you have bipolar disorder, you can work full time. Now, did I stick with it? No, I was just getting a little bit tired and wasn't able to handle it. Things kind of spiraled downward once I came home, however, and things got on, on out of control. I was getting more depressed. I was getting more anxious. I didn't want to get out of bed. I just wanted to sleep in. I also had issues with suicidal ideation. I just didn't want to live anymore. So I'm now at this point of where I don't necessarily want to work and I want to make music, I want to exercise, and I want to have a relationship, but that's not always working. I still regret, though it's been two and a half years, I regret not being able to be with someone that I met two and a half years ago. And it's been bugging me a lot and I don't know how else to deal with it than to express my feelings online, on camera, to my family, to my therapist. It's just very difficult right now because I feel like I made the biggest mistake in my life and I really, really regret it. Anyways, how I've been dealing with coping, even if I have suicide ideations. Well, I write very, very dark music. I write uh, feelings of death, feelings of pain, feelings of hell, things like that. Uh, I found a way to just deal with it and move on without having to go to the the hospital or having to really change my medications. Though I did up from 60 milligrams of Latuda up to 80 milligrams of Latuda. I think in a nutshell, that's it. Not sure what else to talk about. I just know that these videos seem to take off and I get more views than this than my music, even though I spend a lot more time on my music. Uh, feel free to watch it at Real Group Station, Duo Beats, Duo Tracks. Those are all of my channels that I use, and I also use Mono Park as a channel. I want to keep this short because I feel like I'm just wasting your guys' time and I have other things to do that I want to get done. I just want to keep a brief update on how things are going. So I'm hoping that things get better for me. I'm hoping that I find some motivation to continue on with life. Uh, I hope you guys do too because my biggest support is not only my family and close relatives and therapist, psychiatrist, but the people out there. I get quite a few comments regarding medications and just experiences when it comes to living with bipolar disorder. So I hope I make some impact out there. So if you're struggling right now, I just want to say that I struggle too and I'm continuing to do my best to live. Why I choose to live is twofold as my people out there really care about me and two, I care about myself and I have things I want to accomplish and I hopefully can live without having to end my life early. I'd like to experience a life with someone. I'd like to be successful with my music. I'd like to get a six pack. I'd like to just spend more time with my family before they pass away. So things like that. Think about it. I'm not damning you to hell if you don't think about it. I'm not damning you if you're unable to think about it. I'm not damning you if you feel like you want to just give up in life. I'm just saying that uh, if you try to turn the other cheek, things are all right. And if you can continue to try to strive and have goals for yourself, you can make life worthwhile for yourself. It's very important to have goals. It's very important to have think. It's very important to think and act accordingly to what God has possessed for you, such as wanting to live, uh, wanting to do something with your life, being positive, 
reaching out to people when you're down, things like that. You have that resources for you. So continue to do that for yourself and strive. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.